Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm going to be continuing my Photoshop series and we're going to be talking about selections. If you want to catch up on the series, go ahead and click the links in the description below and you can start from the beginning to get back to this point. So let's get started. What exactly are selections? In the last video we talked about adjustments and adjustments are you know, something you can do to the entire image itself. So, you know, add a little contrast to the whole image, increase its brightness, um, color, stuff like that to the entire image. What a selection does is it allows you to select a particular point in the image and then work around with that particular point. This is really important um, for basically everything in the future of Photoshop as a lot of times we don't want to affect the entire image. We want to select certain portions and edit certain portions within the image. So what I did is I opened up an image right here and then I made sure it wasn't the background layer anymore. And so what we have is just this layer right here. And now we can create a selection using these tools right here. Up here we have some shape tools to create the selection. Down here we have some ways to draw the selection. And here we have some quote unquote magical ways to do it. And this is really good if there's like a stark contrast in the background, we can just do one click and it'll do the selection for us. So let's get started with just doing something really basic. Let's click on the elliptical marquee tool. And if I click somewhere in the middle and then I hold the alt key and drag, and then release the clicking first and then the alt key, we'll see that we have this circle right here. The reason I held the alt key is because if I had tried it the other way, it would have dragged the circle from this point downward where the alt key will make it create the circle from the center point instead, which is a lot more um, useful for circles. Now rectangles, you kind of usually click and drag those out so you don't want to use that, but you know, understanding the alt key is important. So we have this selection right here and you can see it's denoted by this dotted line that's moving around from the edges here. What this means is that any effects or anything we apply to the image is only going to be created inside of this selection. And you can see that if we go into the adjustments like we did last time and we do something like um, brightness, that right away you can see that we're only affecting the brightness of this circle right here. Now, this doesn't look very good. We have very sharp edges. So something very important about selection is understanding feathering. So we can actually go up here into the selection tool in the top. And uh, this is actually selection tab. And this is where like everything with selection is gonna be sort of stored here. And what a really good thing to learn is control shift D um, which is the reselect tool. You can go up here and click it as well. And it'll redo that selection that you created last time. So if we go ahead and we delete this last layer, oh, my bad, uh, if we go right here, um, click on this one, we can drag it to the trash can. And then so now we are back to the beginning with the circle, but let's add some feather in there. So if we go to select, we go to modify, we can actually modify the selection with a couple of basic things. Um, you can contract it inward, you can expand it out from that point, you can smooth it a little bit, you can add a little border. What we wanna do though is feather, and this is why it's the only one on a um, fast key is because of how important it is, is that once you click the feather button, we can input a radius and it's going to blend the edges with that radius. So now anything we do is going to have a blended effect. So let me show you what I mean by adding a brightness again. And you can see instead of that harsh line, now we have this really blended edge to this selection and it makes it look so much better. Another neat thing to do is instead of selecting something, let me Control Z or Control Alt Z will let you keep stepping backwards. So let's go back to this point here. And what we can do is we can do select and then the inverse of the selection. So we have the selected and now we're doing the inverse. And so instead of selecting everything in this circle, what we're selecting is everything outside the circle. This is really helpful to create things like a vignette because now what I can do is I can actually lower the brightness of the edges and you see that we have that vignette sort of thing happening just from a circle clicking inverse, and then using the brightness. Let's go control alt Z again, back to the beginning. And let's go back to the circle marquee right here. So we have this selection and maybe we don't wanna select anymore. We wanna try something else. So we can go up in here to select, deselect, and now we're back to normal, nothing's happening. And we're going to go into the, the uh, sort of the draw your own selections. We have something called the magnetic lasso, the polygon lasso, and the lasso. lasso. If you click on the lasso, right when you, um, as you're dragging, it like draws an image for you. Um, and then you can kind of like, right when you release, it's gonna connect it back to the beginning and you're gonna get a selection that way. A little bit better if you have like a pin or something like that to be really precise, because being precise with the mouse is a little bit hard. So that is why you can actually use the magnetic lasso. And this one helps for um, sticking close to an edge. So you'll see that it's 
even though I'm like going a little bit into the left and a little bit into the right, it's understanding where the edge is due to the contrast points, and it's selecting this window for me. So I, all I have to do is get close. You see, if I go really far off, it's going to mess up. But all you have to do is you know concentrate, and it'll create a nice selection for you. But what I want to actually use is the other tool, which is the polygon lasso tool. So what I can do is I can click right here, and I can drag to off in the distance where it ended, which is like maybe right over here. Bring it over, touch. What I'm trying to do is select this walkway here, and then bring it back, and then. See, when you get close to it, there's going to be that circle. That means complete the circle. And now we have the selection right here. And what I want to do is I want to go up here into selection. And we want to add a little bit of feather to it, but we don't want to do 100. We just want to add a little bit of blending to it. So maybe somewhere around 5. And you'll see it moves just a little bit. If you do a lot, you'll actually see this condense really, really close inside because of how much it's feathering. But it did not do that because we're only doing 5. Now I can go down here into like hue and saturation. And I can actually do something really neat here is I can actually change the color of this because I'm only changing the color of selection. Now, sticking around its original color will get the best results here. So, you know, we can kind of go with an orange here, and this looks believable. Where if we go with, like, a bright green, it kind of looks unbelievable just because we have some imperfections here and the, the lighting doesn't work the best, but it actually doesn't look too horrible. However, I'm going to go stick with that slight tint from the original yellow down to an orange, and then what we can do is we can go back to the layer, select, reselect, and now let's go ahead and add in some, um, let's go with some vibrance. So we're going to go over here to vibrance. We're going to add a little vibrance and color to it, and then a little saturation to it. And, you know, we can switch the order of these so we can actually be working on the hue and saturated layer instead of the other layer. And move this around. And now, with a selection, we were able to edit just one part of the image and actually change the color of something. And so we can do, we can continue on this, and we can kind of correct the image a little bit. Maybe we want to um, help brighten this up. So we can go here, up to the top, and what we want to do is just kind of select the train. We're going to use the feather and um, sort of brighten up the entire top of the train here. So we can then go into the select modify feather and we want a sort of a bigger one for this because we're doing a really big adjustment so we want a really big feather to it we don't want it to be really noticeable what we're changing so close to 100 again and you'll see that it rounded off the edge back there like I was talking about earlier and so if we click on here and then we go into adjustments we can then go into brightness and brighten that train right up and let's see it's actually really neat. Oh, you can darken it down to make it look like it's a really sharp shadow. But we're going to brighten it up to maybe right about there. And now we've kind of turned this picture from just like your ordinary picture. And just with this brightening, it looks a lot more professional, a lot cleaner, a lot brighter. We can add a little contrast to give it a little bit of that, that shine. What's actually neat is you can start seeing detail being revealed as we're manipulating this. So you see the, the before we added this brightness, the windows were almost black, but when we brighten it up, we can actually see some more things. Add a little contrast, and we get that like shiny look. And now, so this is what we started with at the very beginning. Whoops. Here, and then what we did was we just added this beautiful brightness to this. And you see the feather is what's really important here, is that it allows the brightness to also brighten up the, the edges up here, so it just looks natural. It looks like it's being reflected. And so we can continue doing that over and over and over. And then the last kind of set of tools of selection I want to go over is the quick selection and the magic wand tool. Magic wand is sort of supposed to be you click on an area of high contrast and it can select that area. So you see that I can just click on these windows and it's selecting the window because it's high contrast. I can click on the train and it does a pretty good job of selecting most of the train. Um, down here you can see it selects everything. What it's doing is it's selecting everything on a color. Um, and then it's trying to find everything that's that same color within, I guess, grasp of it. But you can see it works really good on high contrast. But if we go over to here, you can see that since the color change, it doesn't work the best. And you can actually hold down the shift key to add different elements to it. My favorite tool, however, is the quick selection tool. Um, and this one allows you to sort of draw. So you can kind of just keep drawing things until you get a good image of what you want to adjust. And you, can, you know you can move that stuff around. Like, so for example, if I wanted to, let's drop this all the way back down to the original. So let's draw on this pole right here. You can see it's, it's grabbing most of it, but we can actually also hold the Alt key or, oops, 
yeah, the Alt key you can click up here as well, and you can subtract some of the edges out of it. And it helps you create selections just by drawing, adding a little bit, subtracting a little bit. And now we have another selection that we can manipulate. So these are really good tools if you don't want to, you know, have to do it all manually and have to, you know, grab things and draw it out yourself. If there's some high contrasted areas, you can use these tools to select them really quickly and then make your adjustments and your effects along those. That is about it on the selection tutorial. Remember that selections are really important in um, Adobe Photoshop so that you can adjust certain areas of the image because a lot of times you don't want to adjust the entire image as a whole. You want to adjust certain points of the image and bring color to an area, remove color from an area, and stuff like that because that's really where the power of Photoshop comes into play. Thanks everyone for watching this tutorial. If you got any comments or suggestions, throw those in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, uh, Adobe related content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I make a video every other day. And until next time guys, see ya.